name is Jeremy Long. I'm the founder and project leader of the OWASP Dependency Check Project. Java applications written today contain very little custom code in comparison to the amount of code that's actually deployed to a production environment. This is because we utilize third-party libraries and frameworks to build our applications. A lot of this is free and open source software. It's, it's fantastic, all of this reusable, shareable code that we get to utilize to build our applications. It allows us to ship functionality faster. It's, it's fantastic, it really is. However, as with anything in life, there's always a cost. What if one of these libraries that our application depends upon has a known vulnerability? And because our application depends upon it, our application then inherits that vulnerability and our application is now exploitable. Exploitable because of a known vulnerability that we could have done something about. I started the OWASP Dependency Check Project back in 2012 to help developers solve this problem of insecure libraries. Uh, it's a build tool, uh, works best as a Maven or, or Gradle plugin. You can just integrate it in your build and get notified when there's insecure libraries identified within your application. I'll give a high level overview of how the tool works. Dependency Check utilizes data from the National Vulnerability Database the NVD. Contained within every one of the vulnerabilities within the NVD is a list of vulnerable software. Uh, the, these are called Common Platform Enumeration IDs, or CPEs. Uh, these CPEs are would be something like uh, Apache Struts uh, version 2.1.2. The CPE would be CPE colon slash A colon Apache colon Struts colon 2.1.2. And, and this is great for doing identification within the NVD. However, there's nothing that links that back programmatically to the libraries that we're using, to, to the actual jar file for Apache struts. And so how Dependency Check solves this problem is we build a Lucene index of all of the CPE information, and then we gather as much textual information as we can. We call it evidence from the jar files that are being analyzed. Uh, this evidence is then thrown into buckets of uh, vendor product and version information. And then we use the fuzzy matching within the Lucene index uh, with a couple of custom analyzers and a few other things going on to do best fit matching between the CPE and the jar files that we're scanning. This has worked really successfully to do correct identification of these libraries. However, because it is fuzzy matching, we do end up with false positives in our results. Um, you know, when we identify a library as being, you know, something that's from the Linux command line tools or something, just because the keywords uh, triggered the, the match. Uh, in general, when we're onboarding an application to utilize the dependency check tool, it's really only a 10, 15 minute job to integrate the tool into the build and then look at the report to see what are the false positives and which libraries might I need to upgrade. Uh, if you find false positives, it's, the, it's very easy to create a suppression.xml file and incorporate it that into the dependency check scan. Uh, we always ask that you contribute information about these false positives back to the project, but if you can't, you can just create your own little suppression.xml file and utilize it within your build. And then after it's integrated and you've done your 20 or 30 minutes of work to sort out these false positives, you can get continuous monitoring of your application every time that you do a build or every time that you run through the, like the Maven verify phase. Dependency Check will notify you if there's any known vulnerabilities. I highly recommend that you go out and check out the OWASP Dependency Check project. It can really add a lot of value to your project. Thank you for your time.